Welcome back. Okay, we have been talking a lot about the maximum likelihood estimator, which allows us to estimate the unknown parameters of a probability distribution using uh, data. So this is a method in statistics to estimate parameters given data. And we have hinted that this maximum likelihood estimate is related to kind of a Bayesian formulation or a Bayesian version of this problem. So today I want to flesh this out and make this connection more concrete so you can see how to go between uh, an MLE and kind of a Bayesian estimation of those parameters. And in future lectures, we're actually gonna code this up and do some examples. Okay, so just remember um, that the maximum likelihood estimation problem, what we do is we take our probability density function and we take the, the likelihood function. Essentially, we take our PDF and we plug in our measurement data for uh, the variables. So if I have a Gaussian e to the you know, minus x minus mu squared over um, two sigma squared, I would take my actual measured data numbers that I collected and plug those in for my variables x. And now I have something that's only a function of my unknown parameters. If I take the logarithm of that probability density function, I have something called the log likelihood function. And this tells me roughly the likelihood of observing this specific data given those specific parameters. And what we're trying to do is essentially tweak or optimize these parameters to find the maximum likelihood function, okay? We maximize over all of theta to find the parameters that are most likely or most consistent with the measurement data that we have access to. Now, there is a big downside to the maximum likelihood estimation. And that downside is essentially it is fragile to bad data and it doesn't allow me to include any prior knowledge or beliefs into these parameters. Let me give you a really simple example of a downside, okay? Um, so let's say that I'm trying to estimate the um, probability of a of a coin being heads versus tails. So there's a single parameter P and you know for a fair coin it would be 0.5. So theta would be 0.5 for a fair coin and a biased coin it would be somewhere between zero and one. So if I flip a coin, if I flip a coin, let's say it is a fair coin. Let's say I actually know it's a fair coin um, and I flip this coin uh, three times and let's say each of those three times I just get unlucky. It's not even unlucky. It's just, it happens sometimes. I flip a coin three times and I get uh, heads, heads, heads. Okay, I get three heads in a row. That's the actual data that I have. If I get three heads in a row, the maximum likelihood estimate, the MLE for theta hat would equal one. It says that there is a probability of getting heads it should equal one. You can go through and actually calculate this. This is, um, these are each Bernoulli random variables. So you can actually compute this for n equals three of three Bernoulli coins. And you can convince yourself that with this data, the maximum likelihood estimator will say that the coin is always going to flip heads for all future flips. That's a really bad issue um, of the MLE is that if I give it a little bit of data and that data is not, um, you know, I get kind of unlucky on the draw of that data, I'm going to get a really, really bad estimate. And this is a problem with lots of estimation techniques. MLEs are not, you know, are not particularly bad. It's a problem with what we call kind of deterministic estimation techniques. And so the solution to this is using a Bayesian formulation. The solution is the solution is use Bayes' theorem to incorporate some prior knowledge about the parameter. Use Bayes to incorporate uh, prior knowledge, prior knowledge about uh, about theta. Okay. So literally I might have a prior distribution of what I think theta is. Maybe I think theta is a fair coin. So for example, my strong prior knowledge is that a coin is going to be, uh, you know, a coin is going to be fair. Coin is fair. So, you know, maybe theta is close to one half. 
and this, I'm being very, very loose here, I might say that it's a normally distributed variable with mean one half and some variance. There's lots of ways of, of putting this prior knowledge in. That's a whole, you know, deeper dive set of lectures. But the idea here is that maximum likelihood estimation has this kind of canonical fault. Um, this is a, a cartoon example that shows how bad it can get. But if we use Bayes, um, you know, kind of Bayesian statistics, we might be able to incorporate some prior knowledge about theta to make it more robust to these bad, unlucky draws. So let's write down what that looks like. So in MLE, uh, we use the probability of X given theta for, uh, for MLE. Okay, we use the probability of X given theta. We've locked, talked about this a lot. But if we have a prior knowledge, but if we have, but if we have a prior knowledge, a prior on theta, sometimes we just say a prior on theta, P of theta, this is a distribution of what I think theta is distributed as. This could literally be, you know, a normal distribution around one half. That would be a prior distribution on theta if I think it's a fair coin, pretty tight prior. Okay, but if we have a prior on theta, we can multiply these two and we can get uh, essentially P of X given theta times P of theta. And this is going to equal, maybe I'll divide by P of X just so it looks exactly like we're used to it looking from Bayes' theorem. This is going to equal the probability of theta given X. This is in a lot of circumstances a lot more useful um, for a few reasons. First off, optimizing this function over theta could be kind of messy. This is a hard optimization problem. Um, if I have P of theta given X, this is actually more of what I'm trying to do. I have data. So given data, what's the probability of this value of theta? So I, I essentially also want to maximize this quantity over theta. This would be a useful thing um, to maximize over theta. Um, and I'm just going to label these. This is my prior. Um, this is my posterior distribution. Um, and then, you know, this, these are the, um, the other distributions in, in Bayes' theorem. So if we have a prior, we can get something that looks a whole lot like Bayes' theorem, but we don't always know the probability of X. We don't always have this quantity here. So the useful thing, kind of the, the, the thing that makes this nice for optimization is if we're optimizing over theta, if we optimize uh, over theta, which is what we're trying to do, over theta, P of X doesn't depend on theta. So essentially what we can do, and this is a, a hand wavy argument, but you can make this precise, is that this quantity here, this uh, posterior P of theta given X is kind of proportional. It varies in a similar way with theta. This means proportional to kind of, kind of related to P of X given theta times P of theta. So roughly speaking, if all I'm trying to do is find the theta that maximizes this quantity, instead of maximizing this, I can maximize this, and I will get the theta that maximizes this. That's really, really useful, okay? So um, essentially, I'll just write this out so that it's really, really clear. So instead of, instead of doing kind of the max of the log of P given X uh, of theta, this is the MLE. We, this is the, the, the classic um, maximum likelihood estimate. Instead of doing that, we compute the max of the log of this quantity, of the log of P of theta given X which is essentially I can plug in this expression into here. Okay, this equals max uh, log of P of data given parameters times my prior distribution on the parameters. Okay, these are a kind of equivalent. This is called 
the map. So if this is MLE, this is map, the maximum a posteriori estimation. I'm going to write that out. It's the maximum a posteriori, posteriori estimator, estimate, the map estimate. Because essentially what we've done is we have replaced um, kind of the likelihood function, the log likelihood function in the MLE with a slightly more informative log likelihood function that's being informed by the prior knowledge on theta. In this case, that I think my coin is a fair coin. And we can code this up. We're actually going to do examples for coin flips and this exact example, and also for a least squares estimation, trying to estimate the slope um, of a scatter of data points using uh, maximum likelihood estimators and kind of Bayesian informed estimation where there's some prior knowledge baked in, maybe that the intercept is zero or something like that. And so this is a really, really clever and simple way of incorporating prior knowledge into the maximum likelihood estimation to make it more robust to kind of bad, unlucky draws of the data and other things, outliers, you know, malicious attacks, things like that. Really, really useful um, idea here. Now, this really relies, Bayesian statistics, this sounds like this solves all of our problems. It's nice, but it has some issues. You better have a good prior. If your prior is bad, this is going to be bad, okay? You need a good prior for this to actually improve things. That's for one. Oftentimes, you don't really have an unlucky draw or such a small data set, so MLE is not as bad as I made it sound. Usually, it works really, really well. Um, you need a good prior for this Bayesian version, this maximum a posteriori estimate, to be you know, good. And there's kind of an interesting connection also. The maximum likelihood estimate can be thought of as a special case of the maximum a posteriori estimate when your prior is kind of maximally uninformative. And if you are Bayesian in spirit, you'll know that that means if my prior on theta has kind of infinite variance, meaning it's really a super uninformative, super duper weak prior, then this will actually converge to this. So, so MLE is a special case of the Bayesian version, the map estimator, when my prior is kind of maximally uninformative. But if I have a good prior, I can do better and I can incorporate that prior knowledge into the estimation problem using this Bayesian analog. Okay, we'll see this more later. This is a big topic in machine learning, optimization, and statistics. So we'll get into this. Um, might take me a few lectures, um, but keep, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. All right, thank you.